Yeah. Yesterday, we started discussion on this uh, web UI in that. So what all topics comes under UI? I'll explain. Yesterday, we discussed three topic introductions. Here, we are in web UI. UI here, it is a user interface. Here, user interface. To create this user interactive page, we have to learn that list of all topics are here. HTML 4 and 5. Second topic, CSS 2 and 3. Third topic, JavaScript. Here, fourth one, jQuery. Here, fifth one, Ajax. Here, sixth one, responsive design. Here, seventh one will be here, bootstrap. Here, eighth one will be here, less science, science programming. Here, ninth is project, tenth is exam. Here, like this, I'll continue all my topics. Here, I'm in UI. Here, under this UI programming, I'm learning here all these topics. Here, in this time, total uh, duration of my content will be here. Here, I'm, I'm explaining here web UI. UI means user interface. To create this user interactive page, we have to learn that list of all topics all are like this. Here, in this time, Here, total duration of my course will be here. Duration will be here next two months. Next two months, I'm going to cover all these topics. Here, once you enter your URL in the browser, you can see that here. So once you enter any URL in the browser, whatever application you can see. Suppose if you enter go to meeting, here that go to meeting login or a home page, yeah. Or if you enter facebook.com, that Facebook login page. So this is what here UI. Once you submit your data, your data will be redirected to server. So here your data will be redirected to server. Server will connect to database. Here it will connect to server, server connected to database. Database will give you in here result to server server will give you resultant page for us. So this is connecting with the server page, server connecting to database, database will give you resultant page for us. Here, this is what here, login page for our application. This login page, whatever I created here, this is what here, login. Here, you can see that here, Facebook login page. Here, under this, you can find it here, that username, password. Here, username and the password for our application, you can write like this. This is what here, server page. Server pages are here, PHP, Java, .NET, Python. Here, etc, etc, all comes under server pages. Here, databases are here. Databases are here. Oracle, MySQL, SQL Server. Here, SQL Server, MongoDB. Here, MongoDB, etc., etc., all comes under databases. Here, these all comes under databases. This database will give you a resultant page for us, that is our UI page. Here, resultant page is a UI page. This is what here, inbox page for our application, inbox. Facebook inbox page, you can see here, this is what here, inbox page for our application. Here, when you connect it with the front end to server, server to database, that is MVC architecture. We call it as model view controller architecture. In this model part by server programming, view part is also by server programming. Here, UI part is our UI programming. Here, three team of developers will work out on one single application. One is web UI developers, second one server side developers. Here, third one database developers. So three teams will work for one single application. One is front end, another one server, another one database. So three teams are working for one single application. So that will be like this. Here in this time, UI page is connecting with the server pages. Servers are connecting with the database. 
So this type of implementation part you can see here in our UI program. This type of implementation part you can see here in our UI program. Here I'm going to connect it with the UI here. Uh, here in this UI part, first two topic here HTML. Here HTML. HTML is a hypertext markup language. Hypertext markup language. Here markup means here it is tag based programming. Markup means here it is a tag based programming. Tag is nothing but it's an instruction to a browser. We can give our instructions to the browser in the form of tags. Here one is paid tag. Second one is here unpaid tag. Here like this we have that paid and unpaid in our HTML. We are learning here paid tags and unpaid tags in our HTML page. Here paid here whenever you write the starting tag definitely you need to write the ending tag that is what here paid tag. Here itself we are learning here paid tags and unpaid tags under HTML. Here basically any HTML page follows its own structure. The standard structure of HTML page will be here doc type HTML HTML starting tag HTML ending tag. Here itself you can see that here head and body tag. Head tag and body tag you can show for our program. Head tag is used to write header information. Under this, we can write it here script for writing JavaScript code. Style, we use it here for writing CSS code. Script tag and followed by style tag, we use it here for writing HTML program. Mm -hmm. So here in this script tag, we can write it here, JavaScript code, style tag, we use it here for writing CSS code. Here script tag and then style tag, we use it here for writing JavaScript and CSS code. Here the script, what I'm writing here, this is what here JavaScript code, style is for CSS. So basic skeleton of the web page, here skeleton part of Skeleton of web page, we can create it, create it using HTML. Basic skeleton of the web page. Here, style part will give you basic skeleton of the web page. Skeleton part of the web page, we can create it with this HTML. Here, second part here, CSS. CSS, here it is, cascading style sheet. Here, cascading style sheet. This is mainly created by style part of style part of web page. We can create it, create it using CSS. Using CSS only, we can create a style part of the web page. This style part here, alignment of the web page, all we can create it with the CSS. CSS gives you alignment and uh, style style part here background colors borders text related styles here alignment of web page alignment here left and right alignment left what you want to place right what you want to place those all alignments here and also background colors borders text related styles font related styles etc etc 2d 3d graphics shadow effects all we will write it under the CSS. Here, basic skeleton is by HTML. Alignment is by CSS. So, using JavaScript, we can create functionality to our application. As in script tag, we can write JavaScript code. Here, because of this JavaScript, we can add functionality. Functionality of a page, we can create it we can create it using JavaScript. Here, using JavaScript only, we can add functionality to our application. Functionality. Here, any type of functionality of a web page, we can create it with this JavaScript. 
here only you can find it here because of this javascript we can add it here functionality functionality means here validations cookie creations local storages session storages all we will write it with this javascript here validation validation of the application form cookie creations local storage session storage here animations here exception handling and object oriented rules etc etc you will learn programming part in this javascript in this javascript only we will learn programming part of our application okay so this way we can write it here html code css code and javascript code HTML is creating, it's a hypertext markup language. It is completely tag based programming. Tag is nothing but it's an instruction to the browser. We can give our instructions to the browser in the form of tags. These tags are here two types. One is paired tag, another one unpaired tag. Next one, JavaScript. JavaScript adds validation of the application form, cookie, local storage, session storage, animations. All we will learn it under JavaScript. Here we are creating here CSS, we are writing here JavaScript. Similar way we can write it here. So HTML, CSS. <clears throat> Next one here. Here HTML code you can write, CSS code you can write. Next one will be here. Here HTML we can create, CSS you can create. Here jQuery. So if I show you one real time example here, this is Zoom, Facebook, or a Twitter, <clears throat> any page you can check it here. See here. This is one login application form. You can see here user. If you enter your email address password, you can submit your data. If you enter your username password, you can submit your data here. So this is what here. So if you enter your username password, you can submit your application form. So the submission of application form with your details, if you, any details are wrong, it will give you validation error messages. If any details are wrong, it will give you validation error messages for us. Okay, Like that, we can write it here. Here, all validations, all cookies, all will write it. Here, this center alignment, background color, border color, this layer color, these all by HTML. So colorful structure is by CSS. This email address box, password box, submit button, this forgot password, this anchor tank, these two, and this image and background one uh, container. Here, this is one container. This is all by HTML. If you submit it, you are getting here one error message here. This error message is because of JavaScript. Skeleton is by HTML. Alignment and colors by CSS. Validations are by JavaScript. Here we are using here JavaScript to implement validation of the application form. Here validation of the application form, we can write it with this JavaScript. Here next one, because of JavaScript only, we can add validation of the application form. Here, next I'm going for here uh, jQuery. When you search for jQuery, fourth topic of our course is jQuery. jQuery is a external library. External library of JavaScript, we call it as jQuery. It's an external library, predefined library, but it is an external library of JavaScript. Because of that, we can easily implement our code. Here, jQuery is an external library of JavaScript, existing only, but external library. Here, in this time, you will understand here, jQuery 3.7.1.js. Similar way, you can find it here, jQuery cycle.js. Here, jQuery validation.js. Here, jQuery ripple.js. Ripple is not working. UI.js. Here, etc., etc., all comes under jQuery. Here, this is one here jQuery. Because of this jQuery, it is an external library, predefined library. 
So because of that, we can implement all validations of the application form. jQuery is an external library of JavaScript. Because of that, we can implement easily any type of JavaScript related implementations. Here, jQuery is an external library, predefined library, but it is an external library of JavaScript. Here, now in this time, here, jQuery is a predefined library, but it is an external library of JavaScript. So, because of that, we can easily implement our application. Here, we can easily implement our jQuery application form. So, now you can check it here. Because of this jQuery, what type of output you can create, you can check. See here, if I add jQuery validation, suppose if you search for jQuery validation. Here, that is one site. It is also JavaScript only, but it is a predefined library. Predefined existing library of JavaScript. Here only, you can find it here, jQuery plugin and jQuery related implementation. See here jQuery validation.js. This is one predefined library. So now you can check it here. If you click on this demo link, you can see that here, once you click submit button here, data will be submitted like this. Here, data will be submitted like this. So this is what here, jQuery. jQuery here, that validation of the application form will write like this. This is what here jQuery, because of that we can implement validations. Next, you can see that here, if you submit your application form, see, just I'm clicking on submit button, data will be submitted here, uh, that complete validation of the application forms will be like this. You are getting error message is by JavaScript only, but when you use jQuery, it's a predefined library. So by that, you can easily implement your implementation. So another one here, jQuery cycle. Here, just if you search for jQuery cycle, you will you can see that here, jQuery cycle.js. Here, see here, because of jQuery cycle, you can see that here, shuffling, zooming, fading, turn down, cut and scroll right. See here. This is shuffling effect, shuffle. And one after another, images are shuffling. This is zooming. This is fading. And this one here, turn down. Image is going down. Here, curtain X. And this is scroll right. Here, this type of effect, we can create it by jQuery cycle. If you open any website, in all websites, it, it will show you same type of output. In all websites, it will show you same type of output for our execution. Here, whatever application you are developing here, here, whatever application you are developing here, that application should be here with a jQuery. So because of this jQuery, you can easily implement, if you open any website, every website, almost every website homepage will show you slideshow of images. That slide show of images, we can create it because of this jQuery cycle. Because of this jQuery cycle, we can show you that slide show of images. Here, we are implementing here jQuery cycle. Yes, any questions? Yeah, we are turned down on the attendance. These are uh, predefined methods here. Predefined files, existing files. You can download and you can use that file for our program. The okay. method name related to that file only. jQuery cycle method will work when you add cycle.js in the in the program. See? Okay. Yeah. Cycle.js is one predefined file. I'll show you. Here, plugin. Here. It will ask you oh, here plugin. Here, see cycle. See, this is jQuery cycle.all.js. So, this is one predefined file. You can download and you can use this file in your program. So, by that, you can implement that slideshow of images easily. Okay, very good. Very good question. Here, next, next, I'm going for jQuery UI. 
So just if you search for jQuery UI, UI related all effects, draggable, droppable, resizable, selectable, sortable, like this, you can find it here. So many effects. Here, progress bar, tool tips, animations, here, all we can create it with this jQuery. See, if you search for draggable, see here, I can drag to any place. This is draggable effect. Here only you can see that here, droppable, I can drag it and drop it. Here, resizable, see here, this is what here, resizable effect. Here, resizable. Then, selectable. See here, I can select all the list of things will be like this, selectable. Here, sortable. See here. This way we can sort it. Sortable effect. Here, sortable effect will be like this. Next, we can see that here, button, checkbox, radio button. Here, like this, you can find it here, so many effects. Here, checkboxes, different way of effect of CSS. This is checkbox effect. Here, the colors are changing. Here, radio button effect. Here, like this, we can write it here, jQuery related effects. All jQuery related effects, we can create it like this. So, jQuery is a predefined library, external library. So, whatever you want, you can create it with this jQuery cyclic. A slide show of image, validation, draggable, droppable, selectable. Like that, we have some predefined methods, animations, all we can create it with this jQuery. Next topic of our course here, it is Ajax. Ajax, here it is here, asynchronous. Here, asynchronous JavaScript and XML. It is a combination of JavaScript and XML. Here, Asynchronous JavaScript and XML, we call it as Ajax. In this time, client will send the request to server. Here, client is sending the request to server. In this client-server architecture, client will send the request. Server has to give the response. In this client-server architecture, so whenever your client is sending the request, that time you can see that here, this is what here, client. Client is sending the request to server. Server has to give the response. So in this time, you will understand here without refreshing. Without refreshing and without redirecting. Here, without refreshment and without redirection, if you get the output of this page, that is what here Ajax. In this Ajax time, you will get the output for our application without redirection and without refreshment. Without redirection and without refreshment, if you get the output for our application, that is what Ajax. Here, client is sending the request to server. Server has to give the response. In this client-server architecture, without redirection, without refreshment. What is this without redirection, without refreshment? If you check any website here, here, if you check any website here, see unionbankhome.asp. See, this is connected with the .NET. This front-end programming union bank site is connecting with the .NET programming. ASP is the active server page. Here, if you want to check any home page, about page, contact page, see here, I want to know about the other services. Here, it is opening other services. See, this time what happened? It is changed the URL, redirected to other services page. And here entire page is submitted, completely redirected and page got refreshed. See, if I want to home, see, page is completely loading, refreshing, redirecting. This is synchronous call. With redirection, with refreshment, if you get output, that is synchronous call. So, if you check it here, asynchronous, see, I want to know about Ask Eva. See, I want to know in English. Here only you can check it here. Here skip. So just enter. Here rate of interest. Here deposits. Here go back to main. Here other services. Special schemes for women. Here Sukanya Samruddhi. See here. Here I am getting information without redirection, without refreshment. See, if I check it here. 
products page, account and deposits, I want to know. See, this is refreshing, redirecting, changing the URL, displaying the output. Here, refreshing, redirecting, changing the URL and displaying the output. So, this is synchronous call. So, menu bar menus and wherever it is redirecting, that is what here. Mm, here, redirecting, wherever it is showing that type of redirection, refreshment, that is synchronous call. Here, if we write like this, this is asynchronous call. If you click here, you will see that here. Contact page, interest page, here rate of interest on deposits, here go back to main menu like this. You will get it here, all your output like this. So, Kanya Samruddhi, main method, here interest, rate of interest, here deposit interest. Like this, you will get all your output. Here, this is possible by Ajax because of Ajax. So, Ajax is, is best example here, chatting application. But here, if your client is redirecting and refreshing, getting the output here, that is synchronous call. Here, if you get output like this, this is what here, a synchronous call. Here, client is sending the request to server. Server has to give their response. So, with redirection, with refreshment, with the redirection and with refreshment, here with refreshing, if you get the output for our application, this is what here, synchronous call, synchronous call. If we get output like this, this is what here, synchronous call. But if you get like this, here it is here, asynchronous call. Here asynchronous, here asynchronous call. You will get output like this, this is asynchronous call. Here, chatting application is the best example for this. Here, chatting application is the best example for Ajax. As of now, remember, just brief information about all the topics. Here, next one here, after this Ajax, remaining topics are here. Responsive design. Here, next one here, bootstrap. Here, next one here, less and SAS programming. Here, these three topics are pending. And Monday to Friday, I'll take topic sessions. Saturdays, I'll go for project sessions and exam. Once one topic is over, topic related, 25 questions, multiple choice questions, I'll upload it in your drive. You can write your answers. And uh, uh, once one topic is over, I'll take project session. So the topic, how it will be helpful to design our application, that I'll explain to you. Here, responsive design. Here, bootstrap. Here, lesson size. Here, in responsive design time, you will understand here how to design our output for our application. Here, for mobile phone, tablet, desktop. Here, etc., etc., in all devices, how to show your output that you will understand under responsive design. See here, I'm changing my screen here. So, if you go to the home, see here, now you can check it here. See here. See, if I increase here, if I increase or decrease the screen size, see, menu bar is converting like this vertical menu bar. And other pages, here other pages, whatever I want to see, I can click and I can redirect. See, this is single column layout. All content is displaying in within one, one column, single column. This is for smaller screen. Medium screen, it will be like this. Extra large, here normal desktop screen, it will be like this. Here, this way, we can write it here, all our output. So, we are writing here medium, large, extra large. All screens will display like this. Okay. So, here like this we can write it here. All our output. This is what here. If you click here, it will redirect. See, this way of output you can show for our execution. This is possible by here our program. See here. You can see that here, uh, the slide show and left alignment, these all according to the screen size. Here in responsive design time, how to design our application for different resolution that you will understand under responsive design. 
next topic here bootstrap bootstrap is also just like jquery it is a javascript external library it's a framework framework means it is a ready made architecture it's a framework of html css javascript here html css javascript framework it's a framework of html css javascript this is what here bootstrap here under this bootstrap you will understand here how to design our output for our application by all this here html css javascript framework we call it as bootstrap here only you can find it here bootstrap time you will understand here how to develop our application uh, with this predefined structure so you will understand here how to use bootstrap min.css uh, min file bootstrap min.js file here uh, popper.js file here etc etc all files you can see like this here in this time you can see that here that execution of the code will be here like this here bootstrap is a framework it's a html css javascript framework next one here lesson as lesson as here it is a linear style sheet syntactically awesome style sheet less is here it's a linear style sheet sas is here syntactically awesome style sheet it is a super set of css here lesson as it is a super set of css css only but it external library so it is a super set of css super set of css we call it as lesson as here this is ajax here ajax here it is a asynchronous javascript and xml here you will understand here how to develop our application for our execution here asynchronous call asynchronous here it is ajax synchronous here within the same page asynchronous here without redirection without refreshment if you get your output that is asynchronous Ajax here, it's a client page is sending the request to server. Server is giving response without redirection, without refreshment. Responsive design time, you will understand how to develop our application for different resolution. Different resolution means here, uh, how to develop it for mobile phone, tablet, desktop. Bootstrap. Bootstrap is a framework ready-made framework how to use it you will understand lessons as just it is a super set of css css only but external file it is a super set of css here like this you will understand here all our program jquery is a external library ajax here it is a asynchronous call responsive design and bootstrap and lessons as Responsive design time, you will understand here how to develop our application for mobile, tablet, desktop. Bootstrap time, you will understand here how to develop our application for uh, bootstrap. Here for this bootstrap, you will understand here how to develop our application for different resolution. Here, next lesson as it is a super set of CSS. Like this, you will understand here all our topics. Here jQuery, Ajax, Bootstrap, Lessons. So these all topics we'll learn in our course. Here and every day the topic related uh, uh, here examples I'll do it in separate folders like this. HTML4 examples I'll upload, I'll save it in one folder and the drive I'll share with the students. Here current 6 a.m. batch folder I'll show you in that drive I'm uploading every day class recording. 6 a.m. or 8 p.m. The class recordings, programs, paint file. See here, weekend test. So weekend, whatever a test I'll conduct, that question paper, answer paper and results. Here, recordings. How many classes recordings completed? All class, session number wise, session 1 to session 32 and continuation I'm uploading in another drive. Here, demo files. How many demos I'll conduct? All demos I'll upload here. Here, like this, I'll upload all the files for our program. Here, this way only, I'll upload all the recordings, all files I'll upload into my drive. Here, with that, I can execute my program. Here, I'm explaining here, lessons as 
here and bootstrap all these topics topic related each example i'll upload it in the programs folder recordings everyday class recordings i'll upload it here in this recordings folder here paint file how many classes will conduct all paint files i'm uploading here in this paint folder here documents here all class related documents i'm uploading here so can here drive? yes uh, can you share drive link? yeah yeah the once, once the class com uh, confirmed today we completed demonstration so today if you register with the organizer if you lift the call from organizer if you respond to her durga soft organizer then you will get drive access for this seven evening. Okay, but here class timing from uh, once it is confirmed, class timing will be 6 a.m. to 7 a.m. only for regular okay. basis. This, this is holiday time. So that's why I'm um, continuing like this. But after festival for, from 14th onwards, it will continue at 6 a.m. to 7 a.m. Okay. Okay. Yeah. So if you're comfortable with that timing and if you're com comfortable with this demonstration, if you if you plan for the next two months for this UI course, if this uh, and this all syllabus, if you if it, if you are okay, then you will get drive access or with two recordings and uh, content will be here course content and uh, here first program. Whenever I start first program, that I like upload in your drive. So tomorrow I'll start the first program execution. How to install Visual Studio Code, how to run our first program. That I'll explain to you in our application, uh, in our class. So uh, that program, I'll upload it in your drive. That program only, I'll upload it in your drive. So generally, I'll continue like this. Okay. Yes. Up to now, if you have any doubt, you can ask, please. No doubt, it's clear. We need to check once again. Sorry? No doubt, man. It's clear. It's clear. Okay, clear. Okay. So, please give your response to organizer. So, by that, she will confirm and she will give you drive access to uh, drive access of my 7 a.m. This 7 a.m. batch. But regular basis, it will be 6 a.m. only. Tomorrow, 7 a.m. This week, we'll continue at 7 a.m. only. Tomorrow, I'll start my first session, installation procedure, installation part of my content. Okay. Okay. Sorry? Yesterday itself, I confirmed. I confirmed. Okay. But uh, we sent something in there. Okay, fine. So, we'll continue. We'll continue tomorrow, 7 a.m., same link for the first session. Thank you.